go. I just came here in 1975. 34 years later, I'm still here. Thank you very much. I'm no, you're not. Go sit down. <laughs> sit down. What was it like when you first came here? Exactly the same. Except for Dick Birch was here. Did they have electricity all the way through the lodge when you came here for the first time? They had electricity. They had water, although the dot was different. And at the end, or the beginning of the walkway to the dock, there was a hose right there. There was a shower right there. There weren't showers in the dock, but there was water right there. And people were forever rinsing stuff there. And when he came back from a dive, if you were down around cottage 15, 16, 17, Everybody hit the shower at the same time after a dive. And people at the end didn't get nothing for water pressure. I mean, a little drop or two would come out. It was just awful. But that's changed, right? And that's all changed for the better. <laughs> now there's hot showers in the dock, and, it's, and the dock's different. The dock used to go straighter. I remember it went straighter. And, it, and the house was much smaller. When we used to come back from diving, I always had film left in my camera. So I would jump under the dock and fire off close-ups of the animals that were under there. And one year, Fred Calhoun decided to make a movie about diving under the dock. And it was starring me. And it started with the two scratch marks we made on the dock. We made two scratch marks. As the sun came up right between those two scratch marks. And in this little six or seven minute movie, the sun came up right between those two marks and we see that happen. And then what you see is my foot, my right foot steps beside the camera. And then my left foot steps beside the camera. And then you watch me walk down the length of the dock, I swing out around the dock house, and I take a left and I disappear from sight. And the next immediate cut, phew, you see me under the dock, swimming with my scuba gear on. Back in those days, there were no eight inch wetsuits, three mil wetsuits, whatever you want to call them. I used to dive just like this. I used to wear jeans, and I used to wear a t-shirt. That's pretty old school. Well, and that's what everybody did down here because that's what you did. And they used to put weights in your pocket if you needed a weight. And it often looked like this, and you were swimming with what looked like your wallet in your back pocket. And people would often remark, hey, you're diving with your wallet. And no, in fact, it was a weight belt. But in the middle of filming this movie, I heard a thunk. And I was holding all my scuba gear and, and doing laps around this house so Fred could get the cuts he needed. And I hear this thunk and I dropped all my stuff and I went running back and there was Fred hanging on. He had slipped off the ladder and I saw this hand come up and plunk the camera on the deck. And then he fell in and that was the end of it but he didn't ruin the camera. And I remember the filming of this thing. It was an old Bolex camera that you could film about 30 seconds worth of film. And I'm not talking video, I'm talking film film that had to be developed and processed and then cut and spliced and copied in old fashioned film. But he would get about 30 seconds worth of film and then he would have to rewind the camera. He's been deaf his whole life. I hear everything, he doesn't. But I heard the camera running, and when he stopped, in fact, most of what I was doing was laying down on the bottom, acting. And I wasn't really taking pictures, I made it look like I was taking pictures. And then we had to cut pictures that I had taken, and we made this wonderful movie. But in the beginning, it was just pictures of me, <coughs> movies of me taken snapshots, fake snapshots. And I could hear the camera running. And when the camera 
stop running, I'd stop acting, and I'd wait for him. And I'd look at him. I'd look for it, and I'd watch him rewind in his camera. And as he'd rewind his camera, he'd look at me, and he'd point down, look down. And okay, great, and I'd be ready, and I'd hear the camera start, and I'd start taking pictures, and the flash would go off, and everything would be hunky-dory for about 30 seconds, and then he'd run out of film, and he'd have to rewind the camera, and I'd look up at him, and I'd watch him. And he'd look over at me, and he'd see me, and he'd say, look down. <laughs> and after about the third time of this happening, and I'm watching him rewind the camera, and he looks over and he sees me. He took his own hair, and he snapped his head down. I got the point, Fred, I won't move. I'll just stay down here, keep clicking until we're done. <laughs> that was the first movie we ever made. That's the first movie I ever made here with him. Okay. And then we came back several times. Sometimes we were coming here for a week in like June or July. And sometimes we were coming here at the tail end of what's now known as the DEMA show. Back in those days it was called the International Conference on Underwater Education. The acronym for which is the ICUE, but you pronounce it IQ, and everybody called it an IQ, just like an intelligence bullshit. And it shortened down to two letters. But sometimes the IQ was in Miami, and after that we would come over here for two or three days of diving with Dick Birch. And sometimes it was in San Diego, in which case we would go diving with the California wackos and these Catalina Islands and Channel Islands and all the wonderful boats they had out there. But it was, I don't know, in 76, 77, someplace in that range, it was in Miami, we were coming over here to die for two or three days, and I remember Fred calling Dick and hearing that there were, in fact, waves in the dining room from a passing hurricane. But they made us to dry the place out, this place that hasn't changed, and we came over here and we went diving for two or three days, and then back to Boston. And the following year, it was 1978, this IQ show was in Los Angeles, and Fred convinced Dick to come out and go to the show. And so we all went to the show out there. And it was just a while, back in my drunken days time, I remember dancing with a girl named Cheryl Rodriguez at the California State Disco Championships. <laughs> It was just a whole weekend of debauchery and Jesus, I, and we ended up on a boat called the Bottom Scratcher out of San Diego, diving with Dick, and it was just a wonderful time. And back and forth they went, sometimes there, sometimes in Miami, coming here in July, and, and it just went on and on. And Jeff's always been a couple of years younger than me, and that's never going to change. Right. I always thought he was older than me, but in fact, I just found out that he's a couple of years younger than me. But I remember watching him grow up here, and he was just a kid. But he drove the boats, and I remember we always wanted to do this over the wall dive at 7 a.m. In fact, it used to be at 6 a.m. in the summertime because it got lighter earlier, and it was Dick Birch's signature dive, but he wasn't always here when we were here. So sometimes we would have to go over there with all the staff lift. And I'm pointing to Carlisle and the boutique and all that stuff now. Mm -hmm. But all the staff used to live over there. And, and we would climb over the bodies that were passed out from the night before, wake up the likeliest candidate we could, send them off to get the boats, and off we go on these early morning wall dives, which have been going on, as far as I'm concerned, forever.